China's first-ever extraterritorial jurisdiction on rare earth technologies. Can you believe it? After two announcements were made by China's Ministry of Commerce on October 9th, the White House reportedly held an emergency meeting overnight, and Lockheed Martin was frantic. Without rare earth magnets processed with Chinese technology, their F-35 fighter jets simply cannot be built. This scene is a brilliant response to the United States' long-term abuse of long-arm jurisdiction, extraterritoriality. While the U.S. has grown accustomed to using its domestic laws to interfere with global affairs, China is now using established rules to ensure that the U.S. must defer to China at every turn. How exactly did China manage to pull this off? To understand this, we must first grasp the trick of rare earths. Mining the ore is just the first step, like harvesting coffee beans. The real value lies in refining and processing, which is like turning coffee beans into instant coffee powder. China's coffee machine is near nuclear reactor grade, capable of refining ore into magnet materials with 99.99% purity. The U.S. still uses a coal furnace. The rare earth or mine from California's mountain pass must still be shipped to China for processing. This back and forth not only is cumbersome but also forces the U.S. to pay a hefty price. In contrast, for the past decade, the U.S. has used national security as a pretext to impose long-arm jurisdiction on the global rare earth supply chain, attempting to cut off cooperation between Chinese companies and overseas mining firms. Now, the U.S. finds itself entangled in a predicament of its own making. Even more groundbreaking is the 0.1% rule. As long as an overseas product contains 0.1% of Chinese rare earth materials, or was produced using Chinese smelting technology, its export must be approved by China. Even technical consulting and employee training are considered. Technology exports. Spies once tried to smuggle rare earths mixed into ceramic tile raw materials. Now, that loophole is completely sealed. This stands in dramatic contrast to the U.S.'s typical long-arm jurisdiction. While the U.S. extended its jurisdiction over the global supply chain through the Export Control Reform Act, China is now using its technological standards and rulemaking authority to directly set the global rare earth game rules, shattering the logic of American hegemony in this domain. Let's now dissect this issue. Why did the U.S.'s attempt to use long-arm jurisdiction? To counter its rare earth dependency fail? Why is Europe's self-rescue plan a joke in the face of this dual rule dynamic? And how much strategic wisdom is hidden in China's soft punch that breaks the rules of hegemony? I. The U.S.'s minefield predicament, the classic case of resources without the brains the U.S. is certainly not a country. Lacking rare earths. Historical geological surveys show that the U.S. has consistently ranked among the world's leaders in rare earth reserves, with California's Mountain Pass Mine being a rare earth treasure trove that has been dormant for decades. Since its restart in 2012, the mine's annual output has surpassed 20,000 tons, accounting for 12% of the global total, firmly securing the position as the world's second-largest rare earth mining country. However, Reality is full of drama. The mined rare earth or must travel across the ocean, covering 11,000 kilometers, to the smelting plants in Jiangxi, China. The world's most complete rare earth separation production lines are located there. From extraction and purification to the separation of 17 rare earth elements, Chinese engineers master the core technology with a precision of up to 99.999%. After being processed into oxides through dozens of procedures, these materials must then return to the U.S. by cargo ship. This round trip not only takes over a month but also directly triples the cost. Even more ironic are the declassified 2023 U.S. Department of Defense data, which show that the dependency of active U.S. military weapon systems on Chinese rare earths is as high as 77.7%. In 2021, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program was forced to halt production for three weeks due to the cutoff of Chinese rare earth magnets, directly stalling a production plan valued at $1.2 billion. 
A single F-35 fighter jet requires 900 pounds of precisely processed Chinese rare earth materials. These rare earths are made into high-temperature permanent magnets, stealth coatings, and core components for avionics systems, becoming the indispensable, technological blood in modern warfare. Analysis The U.S.'s dilemma is fundamentally not a lack of ore, but being shackled by its own system. Building a refinery is blocked by environmental compliance and community protests against pollution. Technologically, there has been a 30-year generational gap, with few young engineers skilled in hydrometallurgy, and capital is reluctant to invest due to the long cycle. These three chains have the U.S. tightly locked. China's move at this precise moment is a direct hit on the U.S.'s. Has the ore but lacks the technology. Achilles heel. It's not about forcing a supply cutoff but about using rules to restrict it, which is ten times harsher than a direct embargo, because the U.S. doesn't even have a lever to resist. 2. Europe's Self-Rescue Farce A five-year plan becomes a laughingstock seeing the U.S. panic, Europe also rushed to decouple. The EU proclaimed a goal of 50% rare earth self-sufficiency by 2030, and even built a demonstration refinery in Hungary. However, the reality is that this plant has an annual capacity of only 5,000 tons, which cannot even meet the demand of Germany's Volkswagen alone. More ironically, the core separation equipment in the plant was secretly purchased as second-hand goods from China. UBS data shows that 85% of Europe's high-end magnetic materials rely on Chinese imports. Even if alternative mineral sources are found, without China's patented technology, the refined output will just be Waste Earth Analysis Europe's recent series of performances surrounding rare earth control is a sheer absurdity, completely exposing the hollow nature of its technological autonomy rhetoric. On the technical front, China, through 40 years of R&D investment, has built a patent wall covering the entire rare earth value chain, separation, purification, and deep processing. As of 2023, Chinese enterprises and research institutions account for up to 68% of global rare earth-related patents, forming a chokehold technological advantage, especially in the field of high-purity rare earth target material preparation. This technological monopoly is directly reflected in capacity distribution. 90% of the global rare earth target material capacity is concentrated in China and this material is a key raw material for the core components of lithography machines. With the escalation of China's rare earth export control policy, the European semiconductor industry was instantly put on the defensive. ASML, the global lithography machine giant, relies almost entirely on China for the gadolinium gallium garnet targets required for its extreme ultraviolet EUV, lithography machines. This upheaval completely exposed the absurdity of the so-called decoupling and de-risking strategy. As Europe attempts to cut ties with China in the technology sector, it is in fact placing its own industrial lifeline under China's control, acting out a real-life drama of shooting itself in the foot. 3. The Offense-Defense Reversal In Rules, How Harsh Is China's Version of Long-Arm Jurisdiction? In the past, the U.S. used long-arm jurisdiction to bully others. Now, China has finally learned to fight back using rules. This is fundamentally not retaliation, but a lesson in how the U.S. should behave. Looking back, since 2018, when the U.S. imposed chip sanctions on Chinese high-tech enterprises under the pretext of national security, brutally cutting off the global industrial chain in an attempt to curb the development of China's semiconductor industry, to 2020, when it fabricated the entity list, listing hundreds of Chinese companies like Huawei for control, unilaterally disrupting the international trade order. Now, China's implementation of export controls on rare earths, also under the banner of national security, using technology licensing to respond to the U.S.'s Entity list is essentially an action to maintain the fairness of international economic and trade rules. This is by no means an act of vengeance but a reasonable countermeasure based on international norms. In stark contrast to the U.S.'s one-size-fits-all hegemonic approach, 
China's rare earth control demonstrates the strategic wisdom and composure of a major power. It explicitly includes humanitarian uses in the scope of exemptions, keeping channels open for fields concerning human well-being such as medicine and new energy, reflecting China's international responsibility as a major power. Furthermore, it sets a transition period, giving the global industrial chain time to buffer and adjust, thus avoiding market turmoil caused by sudden policy changes. This method of control, which is both firm and flexible, not only breaks the unilateral logic of U.S. long-arm jurisdiction, but also marks a crucial transformation for China in the international rulemaking contest, from passively dealing with trade frictions to actively participating in the formulation of global industrial governance rules, demonstrating institutional discourse power on the international stage with a more mature posture, achieving a leap in strength from a rule adapter to a rule shaper. 4. The dual clearing of the internal and external national security is not just empty talk many people overlooked one sentence in the announcement. Discovery of foreign organizations illegally obtaining technology for military use. This was not written lightly. The Ministry of State Security just disclosed that spies had disguised high-purity rare earth as solder paste, mixing it into ceramic tile raw materials for smuggling and using small express packages for and moving style illicit transportation. In the past, some domestic companies sold technology for short-term profits. Now that the new regulations are out, anyone who dares to cross the red line will face the consequences. Some say this will scare away foreign investment? Wrong. Samsung and SK Hynix have already rushed to negotiate. Those genuinely seeking cooperation will only become more compliant. Analysis. This control is a dual internal and external strike. Brilliant move. Internally, it awakens those domestic companies that sold out national interests, making it clear that national strategic assets cannot be treated as mere business commodities. Externally, it cuts off the dark hands that channel technology towards military use, maintaining international peace. Those who say this will scare away foreign investment fundamentally misunderstand the importance of rules. True cooperation is not about limitless concessions but about win-win within the rules. This move by China simultaneously safeguards national security and filters out reliable partners. It's truly a win-win. After reading this, you'll understand that China's rare earth punch strikes right at the pain points of hegemony. The U.S. once educated the world through sanctions. Now, China is giving it a lesson with rules. If you can choke me on chips, I can control your rare earths. If you talk about national security, I understand how to hold the bottom line even better.